It's here. I got to show you this, guys. I am incredibly excited about this. Uh, we're going to open this thing right away. And this is so friggin' cool. Um, yeah, you'll never guess what this is. <laughs> really, really, you will never guess what this is. <clears throat> I hope this is what I think it is anyway. <laughs> um, Oh, baby. When you just need a baboon, um, this is a, a taxidermy uh, form that I ordered um, from a taxidermy supply company. In fact, it's very difficult to find a baboon form that doesn't have an open mouth. Generally, people want to they do their taxidermy thing. I don't know why you'd want to kill a baboon anyway, but the um, uh, they're normally displayed with a very grimacing ah, kind of thing going on, and I couldn't use that. So uh, they recommended this uh, as a set of eyes, and I have a feeling, yeah, these are very small beady eyes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace. I'm not gonna use these. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use some larger eyes. Um, and there's a place I can get some cabochons like right around the corner, so I can literally get that today. But let's see what we're gonna do with this. <laughs> All right, follow me to molding and casting. Oh, come on in. <clears throat> so this guy right here um, is, is a fairly standard human sculpt, but I need him to be tote or tote or however you want to pronounce him. So what I need to do is take his face and replace it with baboon face. And then, um, and then this will all have to be uh, plastic coated and we'll have to foam fill the back of the head to support this so that it's really robust and as tough as it could possibly be. I don't want this to just be sort of glued onto the front and then it snaps off later on. So we're going to cut this guy's face off and replace it with baboon face. I, I'm just, I'm so freaking looking forward to this. I, I cannot tell you. I shouldn't have said freaking. I apologize. Anyway, um, we're going to do that and I'm going to really enjoy this. I don't know if you will, but I'm going to be really, really happy about that. One of the things, I've sanded this a bit, one of the things that I want to do is put a, a thin candy shell on it to start with just to protect it and also to fill some of the little sanding marks and stuff because it's foam. I want to fill those pores uh, and that'll start us smoothing things out. Uh, so I'm going to use this stuff called XTC. It's used for smoothing 3D prints. And it basically just fills in all the little gaps and stuff in the 3D print. Uh, and we'll do that uh, to protect his, his face. So that we're, as we're handling this as we go forward, uh, we're not scratching the foam or anything like that. This is actually a fairly high density foam too. This is probably 15 pound foam if I had to guess. Uh, so he is, he is well made actually. Um, I am putting a very thin coat of this stuff on um, because it, it's designed to flow and if I don't want to use more than I need because then it'll start flowing into drips. So okay, I need to immediately wipe this off. And the reason, the reason I, I, again, I, I, I'm doing this on camera so that you realize what's happening. Uh, the reason I need to wipe this off right away is that um, there's, obviously there's release agent on this thing. I need to wash this first because uh, the, the, uh, the epoxy is actually beading. It's acting like I'm painting it on wax. So uh, we're going to fix that now. After an, an emergency trip to, the, uh, to the, the wash sink, we have returned with a cleaned head and I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of checking to see if I find any evidence of what was happening before. Uh, what I want to do is if there are any if there are any drips I don't think it's gonna drip if it does drip though I want them to end up under the chin where I can pretty easily just sand that off or knock it off and it won't be noticeable. What I don't want to do is hang it like this and have any drips basically become protuberant, like warts on top of his head. So that's what we're going to do. I've sanded him off a little bit. Uh, I'm impatient now. So let's go buy some cabochons and for, make his eyeballs. Yeah. 
Actually, that may be too big. Yeah, I think that's us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> kind of lucky we have a baboon eye store just, just around the corner. He started cutting his face off with extreme prejudice. Uh, Anna's going to continue this. I did this with a, uh, a die grinder on the, uh, an, an, air, an air die grinder. And uh, Anna's going to continue with, uh, with Dremels to, uh, to widen the face out. And then we're going to go slowly and try and fit everything as accurately as possible so that we're not trying to fill stuff in later on. This is pretty well positioned, but the, um, uh, there is obviously a seam around this thing, and we'll have to fasten this to this using, we haven't exactly figured that out yet, but we're gonna figure that out. And then, uh, and then we will do an over sculpt between the two to hide the seam. So one is uh, mechanically locking this thing in uh, using various ideas. So I think we're going to start with epoxy putty and possibly some expanding foam. Harold, hello. And, um, and then afterwards, uh, some different epoxy putty. All right, so here's the game plan. I'm going to, we're going to use a couple of different things at the same time. This stuff right here is a two-part epoxy putty that has some flex, so it's really tough. It's, made to make, it's used to make branches for like animal habitats and zoos and stuff. And tough as hell. Um, and it comes with this stuff which is called folding powder. It's sort of like uh, handling dough with flour. Uh, so you, uh, you put this all over your gloves first to try and keep it from sticking, although it will. Uh, and then you take equal amounts of the two components. And then you mix, and then I'll try, try and keep my uh, gloves clean so I can do this. And then you put them together and you start adding this stuff, and it makes it handleable. I will get all this, or most of this stuff, off my gloves as I keep working this forward. Cover it in that stuff, and then you just sit there and keep folding it and folding it and folding it and adding more and more of this stuff. You, you can tell why I'm wearing gloves, right? Okay, so I am glomming this stuff all over the inside. If you keep mixing it with the folding powder and you stop adding folding powder, it gets sticky again. It basically incorporates all the folding powder. So that's where we are right now. So it's good and sticky and I can glom it all over the inside of this guy. So the set time on this stuff, it's like warm chewing gum. Um, is 24 hours. I've got lots of working time here. Uh, so what I am going to do is I'm going to fill this head with 15 pound foam. Um, and that'll, uh, oh, and actually we'll also uh, spread uh, foam, uh, liquid foam, all over the back of the, the skull, which I will show you in just a second. Uh, okay, so third pair of gloves. Um, next step, and I, I Often when I start working with like two-part stuff, I get in the habit of, uh, of rushing because a lot of the stuff that we use has a really short pot life. And sometimes it's like, no, that, that stuff's, I got plenty of time, uh, just slow down. Anyway, I've got a couple of drops of So Strong Black in this. These are the two parts of 15 pound foam. Uh, so named because it is 15 pounds per cubic foot when it, when, when it blows up. Um, so I'm gonna dump both of these in a, uh, in a bucket the other thing that I've done is I have drilled a bunch of shallow holes, these are just quarter inch holes, all the way around the back of my head so that I can paint this with foam. I'll dump the foam in the, um, in the statue and um, 
uh, and then we'll set this into it and they should expand and lock into each other. Now the other thing is that um, we've got the base set up on an Apple box so that the head is actually the lowest point so that, uh, so that my foam isn't going to just run down in the body or fill the back or anything like that. It's going to kind of localize it here in the head. So let's get to mixing. It is actually better to mix this stuff with a paddle mixer to be really thorough about it. And this stuff does go off kind of quick. Um, but in this case, um, I'm just going to, it's such a small batch, it's not worth dirtying the paddle mixer for. I just want to make sure I'm really thorough. All right, so test number two, and I've already tested it off camera, is, uh, <laughs> is uh, I added a little bit of, uh, of baby powder to the resin. And, uh, and in doing so, um, basically sort of, I'm using it as, as an adhesion promoter. Uh, so the resin has, it can bind to itself using the baking soda or the ba baby powder as a, uh, uh, almost like a, a mechanical link. I've got a little bit of time left on this stuff, so I'll thicken it up a little bit as I can before it starts to freeze. Yeah. Now, with this stuff, I'm going to have to monitor it because it's going to freeze quickly. I can't, I, I can't really correct it very easily, but, uh, but at the same time, I've got a 10-minute pot life on this stuff before it really starts to harden up, so I won't have to monitor it for very long. And I can get more coats on, so that's great. So have you heard about the new Pharaoh? <laughs> this is the latest thing, and it's, it's going to really clog the pores. That's what, all the, that's what they all want nowadays. Pore clogging action. Oh, uh, to put it simply, the reason that this resin is black and the last layer was blue is just so I can see what I've done and I can see how thick it is and stuff like that. And I'm changing the color now, so I'm not confusing myself with, the, with more blue. So back out of time lapse. Um, I, uh, I'm just going to monitor this and kind of massage it for about 15 minutes, uh, and then we should be all set up. All right, so we're in the paint room, and the first thing I need to do is wipe off his face with a little MEK or some sort of solvent or something like that. I've, I've uh, sanded him out just, just really uh, to give it some tooth. Uh, I'm going to be spraying a straight nitrocellulose lacquer uh, out of the airbrush, and uh, I just need to make sure there's no dust on it. So that's first. I, uh, I put a coat of epoxy over the eyes to make them glossy. Uh, I did the same thing for Anubis, um, and I don't like the way they look. So <laughs> the, uh, the unpainted cabochon has this bronze tone, and what we're going to do is do that and replace them with these guys, which looks a lot better. So we're just going to glue those in. Well, this part of the build is over, but there's another portion later on that I think Matt's shooting, and that is the creation of a Senate board, which is an ancient game, and that will be uh, the puzzle interface that this guy was made for. Um, I want to see what you built this week. So send us pictures of what did you make.
It could be a fried egg, but you made something. Um, and, uh, and as long as you don't say, hey, don't show this on the air, then we're going we're gonna to put that at the end of the videos from now on. Um, I stole that idea from somewhere else, but it's a really cool idea. Uh, yeah, these, uh, these wires coming out of his shoulder uh, have something to do with what's going to happen in the future. But for now, uh, Tote and I are going to go grab snacks. <laughs>